Hello everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. My apologies again to everybody for not giving you a video yesterday. It was a really awful day. I have had issues with airlines and my surfboard and it was not very happy time. So I got what I absolutely needed to get done and spent a lot of time trying to find a solution and was unable to. But here we are. Well, at least something's keeping me happy and that's crypto markets moving up quite strongly. Quick look at the technicals on the weekly and what I really want to focus on is there's not a lot of congestion between what may become support about 51,800 and the previous all-time high at 68,700. After price fell from this level, it fell pretty quickly and it wasn't until it got down to about 51,800 that it started to develop a little congestion zone. So we're seeing possibly a little bit of resistance about 51,800 if price can close above that today then it's just going to be pretty easy there won't be a lot of pressure or resistance above until it gets to 68,700. I will expect if it can get there fairly quickly that we're probably going to see a pullback or consolidation before it can break through to new all-time highs. Once price breaks through to new all-time highs I'm going to expect energy to be released to the upside and the start of some pretty strong vertical upward movement there will still be along to the up to the eventual final high of this bullish run I'd still expect pullbacks and consolidations along the way but I expect they're going to start to become more shallow and more brief and I expect the bullish run to end with vertical upward movement for two to four or five weeks in this instance an upward trend is still indicated by ADX. It is very extreme, but this is very normal early and toward the middle stage of a strong bullish run for Bitcoin. It's not nearly as extreme as it can get. RSI is overbought. There's no pivot currently on price and no pivot currently here on RSI, so I'm not going to identify divergence. Again, that's not something I've read in a textbook. That's a technique I've developed myself over the years to try and filter out those instances where you identify divergence and then it just disappears. Peers. I think waiting for a pivot in price and RSI to develop at the same point in time and then identifying divergence has a higher probability of it being followed through with downward movement. Absolutely fantastic to see at the weekly time frame ATR exhibiting an increase in range so volatility is returning to this market. This is exactly what we would expect to see at this stage of a bullish run. I have some reasonable confidence that Bitcoin is likely to make new all-time highs, possibly by the end of February. Depends if we see a more time-consuming consolidation develop prior to a new all-time high, but maybe a bit more likely sometime in maybe mid-March. Depends how quickly it can get up there, which make which depends on what kind of consolidation we might see at resistance at the previous all-time high. The daily time frame price found a little bit of resistance, about forty-eight thousand moved strongly higher. This candlestick for the thirteenth of February has a really strong bullish long lower wick, and then the fourteenth of February's just moved on higher. It's closed above 51,800, so what was resistance now turns to support. This current session so far, just after midday in New York, is developing a bit of a bearish upper wick. So far, it's looking like a gravestone doji. This could indicate a consolidation or pullback may develop here, but we saw a bit of a bearish candlestick. This could be considered a hanging man for the 13th of February and it wasn't followed by any downward movement. On its own, if today's session does close as a gravestone doji, I would want to see a bearish follow through in the following session in order to have confidence in reading it as a bearish reversal pattern. Now, like I said on the weekly, we may very well see another consolidation or pullback develop prior to all-time highs and that's why I'm saying sometime in March for a new all-time high looks a little bit more likely than just in the next week or so at the end of February. I'd love it if it was in February though it's my birthday coming up soon and wouldn't that be a fantastic birthday present. Overall we are still seeing some push from volume pushing price higher but these high volume days have a very slight little decline from here to here to here so a little bit of weakness just a little bit suggesting 
suggesting maybe we are going to get a consolidation or pullback fairly soon in order to relieve some extreme conditions and have a little bit of pause before it continues on up. Price doesn't always move in a straight line and at this stage in the bullish run, consolidations and pullbacks along the way are a normal to be expected development. The trick is trying to figure out when they arrive and then when they end. We got the last one, the end of it quite well with that nice hammer candlestick pattern so that was fantastic. On Sunday and earlier in the week I drew your attention to this very strong bullish signal from ADX when the black ADX line rises up from low levels that's below 15 and rises up from below both DX lines when it reaches 15 with a positive slope it indicates a trend in a very early stage and the positive DX line is above the negative so it's indicating an upward trend, a bullish trend in a very early stage. This is the strongest signal ADX can give so this leads a lot of confidence to a bullish analysis for Bitcoin for the short to midterm doesn't mean we can't see pullbacks and consolidations along the way up. That's normal to be expected behaviour. RSI is overbought, but this one can get extremely overbought before we see a deeper, more time consuming pullback or a more time consuming consolidation to relieve extreme conditions. Money flow is now also overbought normal to be expected at this stage in a bullish run for Bitcoin. And for the short term, absolutely wonderful to see an increase in ATR as a measurement of volatility as volume and volatility returns to this market. This is my Elliott Wave count for Ethereum and today I'm moving the invalidation point up to the end of Minuet Wave 2. Within Minuet Wave 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start below 2153.46. This channel is going to be very important next week Oh, maybe the end of this week as well, draw it from the low of the uh, 12th of October to the low of the 23rd of January, place a parallel high on the high of the 9th of December. The upper edge provided resistance for the end of Minuet 1, the lower edge provided support for the end of Minuet 2 and subsequent more shallow pullbacks along the way up. Now price is approaching resistance at the upper edge of this trend line. Look out for possibly a little pullback before it breaks through resistance. Might not happen though. After it's broken through resistance, look out for a potential pullback of support before price moves up and away. If my targets for these third waves are wrong, they may not be high enough. I'm using the Fibonacci ratio 11.09 to calculate targets for a minute 3 and minor 3. Technicals on the weekly for Ethereum. It's a little bit further away than Bitcoin is from its previous all-time high. And the all-time high back here in November 2021, there's a bit of congestion quite quickly just below that. And then from here, this high third of or week beginning third of April, about 3,580, there's a bit of a free fall to next resistance. We've broken above what was resistance at 2,400. Back tests or consolidations around here, back tests of support of the upper of the triangle trend line. Now price is starting to move up and away. I'll expect a relatively quick rise up to next resistance at 3,580. And when that's done, I'll expect possibly the next resistance about 4,100 and then final resistance at the previous all-time high at 4,865. So once we get up into this zone, it may slow down with some consolidations and pullbacks, but for the short term, Ethereum could just move up quite strongly higher. And that would reach the triangle target. This is a big ascending triangle. We had the breakout, back tests of support. Now price is moving up and away toward the target for the triangle at 3347. Some nice push from volume as price moved up and away to start. The last few sessions not so much, a little bit of a decline, but it's really nice to see this curve upward pushing volume, pushing price higher. For the very short term, a little bit of a decline is not a real deal breaker and we could be very well see some volume return to the market in coming days. It'll be great if we could see a new extreme in volume beyond sixth of week beginning 6th of January. We haven't yet. RSI is neutral. ADX again indicates an upward trend. It's extreme but such a long way from as extreme as it can get for this market and it has given a very very strong bullish signal rising up from below 15 and below both DX lines. Thank you.
It's now above 15, again has a positive slope. It indicates there's an upward trend, which is a long way to go before it gets extreme. This is a really bullish look from ADX. At the weekly time frame, on balance volume has this little resistance area or resistance at the yellow line, support at the purple line. If we see a break above resistance here from on balance volume, that would be a reasonable, reasonable bullish signal. It may, may either accompany strong upward moves from price or it may proceed strong upward moves from price and this is why I love to use this indicator in this way with resistance and support because it can give you a leading indication of what price is about to do. At the weekly time frame very nice to see an increase in ATR, measurement of volatility, volatility and volume are returning to this market as well so that supports a bullish outlook for Ethereum. Daily technicals, what was resistance at 2700 has been closed above, resistance turns to support, look for next resistance at 3,580. An increase in volume for the 13th of February, a little bit of a decline for the 14th of February is not a deal breaker. Overall we're seeing volume pushing price higher. On balance volume still in this technically weak range, no signal. ADX, both time frames are telling us there's an upward trend for Ethereum. It's pretty obvious the trend is upward and it's a long, long way to go before it's as extreme as it can get for this market. RSI is overbought but not nearly as extreme as it can get and money flow is overbought. This can also reach much more extreme. Three Elliott wave counts for XRP. This third wave count is my preferred wave count. It expects that a second wave at minor degree following a second wave at intermediate degree is now complete and so XRP now expects a third wave at minor intermediate primary and cycle degree is in its very early days and we are starting to finally see some follow through from XRP. Minor 2, if it continues further, may not move beyond the start of 1, below 0.4456, but if it's over here as a double zigzag, there's really not a lot of room left for it to go into, really, is there? And it's quite long-lasting. It's longer-lasting correction than this one of intermediate 2. This was 35 days. And here, minor two, 79 days. So it's a lot longer lasting. That's okay. Proportion isn't always perfect. And this suggests that intermediate three may actually be developing as a very long extension. When waves extend, they do so in both time and price. When they extend in time, they like a stretched out accordion. The folds within the accordion are now visible at higher time frames, the corrections within the extension take up more time so they can be longer lasting than corrections one or more degrees higher. I hope that analogy makes sense. Second Elliott wave count, pretty low probability. I'm adding a limit now. If minute four of this possible ending contracting diagonal continues any higher it may not be longer than minute 2 so it can't move above 0.6157 because this diagonal should be contracting we've got a zigzag for 1 and 2 and 3 at 0.1353 is shorter than 1 which is 0.1612 so the diagonal must be contracting which means the fourth wave cannot be longer than the second wave so that the rules regarding wavelengths for contracting diagonals are met so there's your limit I'll discard this with price reaches that limit. Third Elliott wave count, lowest probability. The invalidation point for this is 0.6236. Considers intermediate two continue further as a zigzag with minus C, an impulse with a series of first and second waves. We need to move through the middle of the third wave and have a series of fourth wave consolidations or bounces along down to the target. Now microwave two is longer lasting than subminuet two and minuet wave two. That's, I mean, again, if the third wave is extending, that's possible, but I, I think this is not the correct wave count. It's just going to see XRP move absolutely opposite to the others. And let's have a look at if we can see some technical strength in here. The second wave should be weak. It should exhibit weakness in um, momentum and range, uh, weakness in volume. It shouldn't be a particularly strong movement, whereas the preferred wave count is expecting a third wave we should see strength in this upward movement so let's have a look what are we seeing we've got a series of six hammer candlestick patterns these are bullish reversal patterns quite the cluster and it comes in the context of a reasonably extreme downward trend so that's a pretty bullish look resistance about 54 55 cents might be broken today if it does it'll turn to support a death cross is a bearish signal 
This is pretty lagging though and it doesn't have a lot of support from the rest of the technical analysis. I tend to use the moving averages more as a confirmation kind of a tool. If the downward trend was not very extreme, if conditions weren't oversold and there wasn't a cluster of bullish reversal patterns, I'd give more weight to the death cross. But because it's contradicting so many other signals, I'm not going to give it so much weight. But I will acknowledge that is a bearish signal. The reason why I don't give so much weight to moving averages and tend to use them as a confirmation tool or lack thereof is because they are such lagging indicators. The 50 day and the 200 day, they take a long time to move Around. If there has been a trend change down here, then the moving averages are going to take a while to negate that death cross. Volume is pushing price higher, so we do now have some in, some support from volume, some strength and upward movement. On balance volume gave us a bullish signal back here, no new signals, and the follow through from that bullish signal could now be resolved. The downward trend reached extreme, but not very extreme. It's now ADX is declining, telling us there's no clear trend. RSI reached pretty close to oversold, but didn't quite get there. So the downward trend was fairly close to extreme oversold conditions. Not fully, but close enough. And money flow got reasonably close to oversold. So given those near extreme conditions, that cluster of six bullish candlestick patterns, I will give that weight. And it does look like XRP because it's got push from volume as it moves higher from all those bullish candlestick patterns. It does look like that supports my preferred Elliott wave count. ATR, however, is still declining. So we've seen a little bit of volume start to return, but we haven't seen range return. So I do still have bearish wave counts. I can't discard them yet. They look like they're less likely. But if we see ATR start to show an increase, I'd have a lot more confidence in XRP. Again, it is lagging behind the other two. That's it from me today with your analysis and I hope everyone is having a lovely day.